Hi everyone, this is Thomas from Video Mantis, and I'm here with another Mantis discussion. We have Noel Espinoza. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing very well, thank very you. Very good, man. You're a man that I've known for a long time. What has it been? At least 10 years. Pretty close. I yeah. think it's about nine. Pretty good. Oh, I, man, I, you, are you, you, you're counting on me. Are you going to send me like an anniversary card or something? I hope. Well, well, I haven't received my nine year, uh, my, my ten year pin from uh, six nine five. That's there why. you go. There you go. Right, right, right. <laughs> I think I met you just when I uh, first joined uh, the the LA six nine five. Excellent, excellent. Uh, well, tell us a little bit more about yourself if if ha- people haven't uh, met you before. Well, I'm a boom operator, and uh, I've been in the business since uh, nineteen uh, nineteen ninety six. Mm-hmm. I went to college at the University of Utah. And graduated from film school. Mm-hmm. from University of Utah. Bring your mic up just a little bit, too, just to make sure that everybody can hear you well. There we go. There we go. That's is a little that, better. Is that better? Yeah. So, so anyhow, I went, to, uh, I went to college, went to film school, and I uh, graduated there. I mean, it was, it's kind of, I, I, I took an interesting turn because I initially went to college as, a, um, uh, as, a, as an electrical engineering major. Mm-hmm. And uh, then I got to the point where I just didn't care what made the world go round. Always had a uh, interest in movies, and I was working for this one company back in Utah. It was called Video West, um, and they had a Foley studio there, and they had a pro- you know they had a video production. And they had a Foley studio. I was just like, I want to be that guy behind the board. That's cool. And so when I got into college and everything, when I decided that I was going to go, I was just like, when I was changing my major, I was just like, how do I how do I get to be a, re- a recording engineer mm-hmm. you know, at the university? Um, unfortunately, University of Utah didn't have anything to teach you how to be a recording engineer. Right. At the University of Utah, not not the um, music department. And then they said, well, well, go take a look at the film department. They might have something. To, I was like, all right. So I went to the film department. They didn't really have anything exactly, but I took uh, some, some of the basic uh, film production classes, and I just was hooked. I've always loved how, you know, always intrigued on how, uh, you know, movies were made, you know, the movie magic and everything. Love movies. That's me. Yeah. And, and so, and then that's it. I graduated from college and then I got started uh, right out of college because uh, there were several people that was in the program that were working in the industry in Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City was kind of like uh, before Atlanta's heyday. Mm-hmm. Uh, Utah was the uh, kind of like uh, they they touted themselves as the Hollywood uh, you know Hollywood East uh, you know not not quite New York but you know, you know outside of Hollywood All, you know Cal, you know Utah's you know by plane it was what an hour drop uh, hour flight or an hour Maybe. and a half flight you For know sure. and stuff like that and so you know you know. You know, they could fly into Salt Lake, uh, Salt Lake Airport and, you know, be, be to L.A. within a couple hours. Right. And so they had, in the 80s and 90s, they had a real bolstering film community. I mean, they were known for, Salt Lake uh, was known back then, was the movie, uh, the movie of the week capital. Hmm. And so, you know, all the movie of the weeks. And then all of a sudden, you know, the movie of the weeks went away. You know, reality TV hit, you know. The strike happened. Everything went to Canada. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, it was rough, man. That was that was right when we started to get into the union. We were like, all right, we're here, and then everything fell apart. We're like, great, now what? It's like the Wolf of Wall Street. How that movie started, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. So, so anyhow, so after I got out of college, I uh, I had a bunch of people that were already working in industry, and they put me in touch with some people uh, that were already working on um, television show Touched by an Angel. Mm-hmm. Touched by an Angel is, you know, everybody's mom's favorite TV show. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's that's the thing. It's just like, oh, that's my mom's favorite TV show. <laughs> yeah, ran, ran for nine years. So I did the last four years of that. Um, those guys, the sound mixer uh, and the boom operator on that show, uh, Steve Lanieri and Joe Girard, they top-notch guys. They've been in the business years before I even got started. Wow. And, uh, and I mean, Steve... I got started doing sound when he was an Air Force cadet. Joe, you know, was like in like eighties, you know, doing movies and things like that. Movie of the weeks in in Utah. So so he, you know, those two guys, those guys were are, are like you know anybody could you know cut their you know 
comparable to anybody here in LA. You know, so I got taught from, uh, as, as I consider, you know, you know, the premier people in, in, in Salt Lake on how to be a boom operator because I got hired on as a utility. And I worked four seasons as being a utility from them. And then after that show ended, went on to another show, uh, a Warner Brothers Network TV show for three years called Everwood. And did that. And then after that, you know, did a bunch of movies uh, and other things, commercials and things like that in town. And then the economic crash happened. And it was just like, I need to do something different. Mm-hmm. I, I was just <coughs> like, All right, so what do I got to do? I got, I, I've got to be able to you know, take care of my family, provide for my family, just got married and everything. And so it's just like, all right, so what do I do? Mm-hmm. Prior, you know, rewind back to when I was first starting my uh, career, I met an individual uh, by the name of Steve Thibault. I was working as a PA, got hired on a couple shows. And um, it was <laughs> so odd because when I was getting started, just like so many people get started on work as a PA anything to get the foot in the door right exactly and and so i was working as as, as a pa in the art department i mean in the prop department and uh and and the prop master was just like well you know so what are your goals I said, tell you the honest truth i want to work sound he was like i hear you it so happens that my best friend here is a sound mixer on the show nice turns out to be steve Thibault. <laughs> nice. That's a good friend to have, you know. And so, you know, I stayed in contact with him numerous times throughout, you know, while my career was growing, and always kept him informed of what I was doing. You know, you know, I'm doing, yeah. You know, hey, ha, you know, call him up, you know, or I'd send him a message or send him an email or something. Hey, I just saying hi. How are you doing? Everything. You know, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I'm doing this show and doing this, you know, letting him know about my progression. And and he always told me that that I was, uh, w- you know, if I wanted to come to L.A., um, let him know. And so it it came to a point, like I said, where it was just like things stalled out, and I was just like, I need to do something different. So I says, I'm ready to come to L.A. And he says, Well, you got to join the union. It's mm-hmm. like. Okay, well, how do I do that? Yeah, what's that step about? Yeah, so so he says, here, well, you got to call 695. They'll let you know. And I says, okay. So I called 695. I said, what do I got to do? So he says, well, they told me, you know, you've got to pay, you know, you got to pay your dues and everything, and it's X amount of dollars. Mm-hmm. And then you've got to submit everything to contract services. And so I was just like, okay. So how do I get in contact services? And he says, well, here's the information. So I contacted them and submitted um, contact to them. And they says, all right, what do, what do I need? To, you know, my work history. So I sent them everything. And luckily for me, a lot of stuff that I've been doing uh, was a lot of episodic TV. Uh, and a lot of, you know, Everwood was a union show. Mm-hmm. And so I think that really helped. And there was a couple of the features after that that were, that were, that, that were union. And since the state of Utah, be, being a right to work state, you didn't have to be a member of the union. So I st- still got my union days, which I didn't know. Mm-hmm. Nice. <laughs> and, um, you know, so I, I, I saved, I, I remember somebody telling me a long time, save all your call sheets. I said, so I saved all my call sheets, I saved all my pay stubs and everything. And, and I submitted all that plus information from the payroll companies. And they were just like, okay, boom, boom, you're in. You, you qualify. Yeah. And I, and I qualified as, as, as a YA boom operator. And so I came down, and, and, and like I said, I have to owe Steve Thibault a lot of gratitude. He, you know, I have to, like, give lots of thanks to him. Because, you know, he, everybody talks about mentors. And mentors, yes, are very in, in, instrumental. In, in people's successes, especially in this industry in, sure. in, in, in L.A. Yeah. You know, if you've got somebody, you know, helping you, you know, kind of like moving you on and, and guiding you through, you know, the maze of everything, because it's a maze. Yeah. You know, I, I, I can't even think about what, what some people come in in blind. Yeah. It's just have to do with it. Yeah. And, and, and thankfully, I had, you know, 
an angel over my shoulder yeah. help, helping me, you know, through the whole entire process. Yeah. Because once I got everything going and everything, he was just like, okay, um, brought me on. He was just starting Modern Family, brought me on day playing on Modern Family, and, and, and then. What a way to start, brother. And, and, <clears throat> and then from right there, he was just like, all right, I'm going to take you around the, the lot. I'm going to mm-hmm. introduce you to guys. So he introduced me to guys that were working. He introduced me to guys like Von Varga that was working on House and Juan Cisneros and working with him on House, you know, a couple other guys and things like that. And then next thing you know, and uh, I was getting phone calls from these guys to day play, second units and things like that. And then, uh, you know, and then he gave me a list of names. This is call these guys. Yeah. Tell them that, you know, I recommend you and, and stuff like that. And so... I gave, you know, called them, you know, or sent them an email or whatnot and, and made contact. And, you know, you know, through that, that helped me grow. You know, and there was other guys that I met along the way. You know, I had another friend that was down here as a camera assistant that knew George Flores. Oh, nice. And George Flores uh, introduced, you know, camera assistant uh, introduced me to George Flores. And he helped me out, you know. And so, you know, pointed me and recommended me, you know, because he didn't know me. And I, I talked to him, but based upon my relationships with other friends, helped me get my foot in the door. Mm-hmm. And so, and, and then then afterwards, it was, you know, my work ethic and, and everything that kind Yeah, of then it just speaks for itself at that point, because you're, you're in the swamp. Yeah, you exactly. Know? Yeah. And, and so, you know, I just kept, going forward and it's just like you know and you know everything i want to do is just like put my best foot forward every single day of the week no matter what it is you know no matter how i feel or how crappy the day is it's always you know keep doing your best keep doing your best that's and, all you and, can do and, and you know it's, you know you're gonna have crappy days mm-hmm. you know don't you know don't get discouraged don't give up you know just go forward yeah, absolutely. You know, it's kind of uh, funny. There, I watch a lot of like MMA, UFC stuff, and there's a very, very famous fighter. His name's George St. Pierre. I don't know if you've ever heard of him or not. Uh, he's from uh, Canada, and I heard an interview with him recently. And they said, you know, how do you just, how did you become the champion that you are? Because he's just ridiculously famous for everything he is. He defended the belt many, many, many times. And they said it was because. You become the champion on not the good days. It's the bad days that you become a champion. It's the bad days where you say, I don't want to get up. I don't want to go to work. I don't want to go to the gym. I'm going to go anyways, and I'm going to put in an effort. And I'm just going to get in there, and I'm going to do it, and I'm going to focus on being a professional, like you just said. And those are the days where you grow and become the champion that that you need to be. Mm -hmm. And I just always found that to be very, like, poetic and very, you know, true. You know, it's like you said, even if you're having a bad day, you've got to check your attitude at the door because you're here to create a product for the client. Exactly. You know, and that's that's what it's about. Yeah. Well, and, and then your attitude sells yourself to everybody. Yeah. And, and your attitude, you know, allows you to get things done with other departments. And, and you know, if you have a good attitude and everything and you have and, and, and positive attitude and and. and and everything it's it's easier for people to like i'll help you Mm -hmm. you know it's easier to get help from the wardrobe department it's easier to get help from the camera department absolutely if you're a bear to work with they don't want to help you they only want to be around you right yeah for sure for sure so you know this is kind of an interesting mantis discussion because this is the first time that we've had a y8 and a y7a And I think that that's an interesting, you know, duo because, I mean, we're we're the guys that are standing up. Sound Mixer sits down at his cart and runs the spaceship. But, man, we're we're the arms, you know. What can you talk about the uh, the synergy between the two roles in this department? How do they need to work together? What's your opinion of the two and how they play together? Well, the whole entire department needs to work together as a team. Uh, it's, it's, that is true. It's not necessarily not necessarily Us the too. boom not necessarily the boom operator and utility. It's the boom operator utility and the sound mixer. I'll, Every, give, you, I'll give you that one. Everybody has to work together as a team. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you have to do that. For sure. For sure. Mm-hmm. 
But what more can you talk about? Like you were bringing up a couple things in the pre-interview about, you know, just the the preparedness of a utility and how a, how a utility can utilize this time properly to better help the boom operator and sound mixer. A utility needs to be organized. Okay, and, 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 and to know where the gear is and everything that's on the cart at, at a moment's notice. Mm-hmm. It's just like, who knows, you may need some weird thing or how to put it together or whatnot. So n- knowing, having an understanding of all the equipment is a huge plus. Mm-hmm. And um, being attentive, mm-hmm. that's, I can't not stress that it's it's just like key primo number one because you know you're out there on set you know because the boom operators you know he's out there on the he's out there on the front line he's out there on the battlegrounds and everything and it's just like calling in hey you know i need this or i need that or hey you know hey um you know I, I need maybe a plant mic over here. Right. So, so if the boom and that utility's just, just got to be by the cart and go, got it, you know, and you know, flag the mixer. Hey, I got it. I'm going out. It already has it in the hand. And see, a lot of this happens beforehand. You know, you know, pre, you know, uh, discussing ahead of time, knowing maybe a possible plant mic, and then discussing, right. you know, oh, okay, okay, maybe what type of plant mic are we going to use? Maybe just a sink and loft. Uh, as, as a plant mic, or are we going to use a full microphone? You know, a Cmit 50, right. Sheps, uh, you know, M- MK41. Yeah, how intensive is this plant going to be? It, it, a lot of that has to go with the planning and discussion ahead of time. But, exactly. But sometimes that doesn't necessarily happen. So, so like, if the utility was just like, uh, yeah, sure, bring in a plant mic. What do you want me to bring? It's just like, well, bring this in. Okay, exactly. So, and and so and it's so, always been a troubling thing for me, man. Like when you're day playing on a job and they're like, "Hey, bring the plant mic." And you're like, "Well, uh, I don't know this cart yet." So, you so know? so what are we bringing in? We 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 bringing in uh, a a a a cement, we can bring in a 50, we bring exactly. in a Sheps, yeah. we bring in a cub, a cub. or we bring in just a, a loft. Yep. You know, sit there, yep. you know. A lot of that has to be has to be addressed maybe, you know, after rehearsals when we're when we're talking about yeah. Uh, right. You know how we're going to attack. How we're going to attack the scene. For sure. For sure. And and then the other thing about the utility is, is like, you know, have an understanding and 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 perfect and their skills on being actual boom operator because mm. you come in at the last minute. This yeah, is for like, sure. Because you know you can plan things out. I got this. You know, maybe put this on the wire. Or, or or exactly, or if you think, you know, you got six people in the scene. Right. You know, you, you got character A, which is way deep. Mm-hmm. Can't reach it by the boom. Any one of the booms. Um, and so, all right, we'll, we'll kick, pick him up as, as, as a wire. Right. And uh, then, you know, then divide the scene out. Okay, maybe, all right, you, boom operator gets, uh, uh, you know, players b through b through d right and 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 then the utility picks up you know the last two maybe you know or 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 whatever and and pick whatever the and being able to know how to boom and and the understanding is, is like being able to come in and um even though the boom operator works out places for the uh for the second boom to come in, but knowing instantly is like can can assess the situation. It's just like okay, yeah, he told me here I've got this light, I've got this light, and I've got that light over here. That's what I'm gonna cause my shadows and right. everything. Knowing how to you know avoid you know I got camera over here, I got camera over here. Yeah, well, it's it's definitely good for a sound utility to have you know the basics of booming and the basics of lighting to be able to jump in and be able to hold his own. Um, however, one of the things that, um, I've noticed in my experience is sometimes I work with boom operators that are very helpful in understanding that we have our own roles of things that we have to do during the scene leading up to when the direct reels action. And sometimes all of those things 
prohibit us from physically getting on set. Like if we have to wire a bunch of people and we haven't had time because the lighting wasn't even ready at the time. So I've had some situations where it's like the sound mixer says, Thomas, you're going in, you got to do second boom. And I get on set and the guys like pick up this person and I literally, I don't know anything yet. Like, cause they haven't been communicating with me. I've just been doing my tasks and I've worked with other boom operators that'll be like, Hey, check it out. I know that you've been busy. This stand over here. This is where you've got to be. And they've been able to help me get prepared faster. I've, I've liked that communication better. I think in fact, working with you, you were one of those guys that just always made sure that the utility, you know, because they're busy. Hey, go do these five things. <laughs> See ya, you know, and then you go to making things sound good and, and really working out the scene with the cameras. And then all of a sudden you're like, you know what? We really do need a second boom. But, you know, if, if we don't have a time to, to get in and analyze the scene like you do, we can get stuck. Right. You know, and that sucks. <laughs> well, I've worked as a utility also. Right. And so I know exactly what you're talking about. And, and so it's just like, and that's why I'm saying is it's like being organized and being attentive and trying to be proactive as possible. As possible as you can. Understanding the scene, knowing what, what's going on, you know, uh, you know looking at the lines, having an understanding of, you know, where all the lines are, because who knows? Because plans change. Right. You could have, you could have these lines. Keep talking. You could have these lines and, um, and then the, it, it could change to the point where, um, oh, wait a minute. I can get those lines. What's more important is getting these other lines that I'm having troubles with. Yeah. And, and so then it changes. And so then all of a sudden your cues as a utility are different. So being able to adapt. Yeah. Being is, adaptable is, 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 is very important. Yeah. It's, it, it can get stressful because you, you know, it'll change on a whim. Just like you said, oh, okay, camera changed something. Now you have to get this and you can't get frustrated with it. You just have to figure it out. Well, I have a lot of respect for utilities because of the fact that they have a very demanding job, especially in the mornings and especially in the evenings and, yeah. and, and, and a lunch. <laughs> yeah, beginning, <laughs> you know, middle, end. So basically the entire day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at the beginning of the day, you know, you, you know, it's chaos, getting started, you know, yep. jamming slates, getting contacts out and getting everything all ready. Yep. You know, wiring actors and everything. You yeah. Know, so you got all those dudes. Prepping everything. You're in a new area. So now you got to program frequencies, wireless coordination in a new area. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, so, you know, depending upon the uh, duties that are set down for you as, as a utility based upon what, what the mixer is want you to do you know then uh you know after lunch you know jamming all the slates and and then you know repack and rebattering all, all all the transmitters off the talent and everything mm -hmm. like that and then getting back into the swing of things yep. and at the end of the night picking up slates grabbing lockets finding getting <laughs> slates you mean not picking them up finding them god it's annoying and context yes finding gosh. the context and when is somebody going to put like a little where you whistle and then they go beep, 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 or something so we can find them? <sighs> Whatever. So, I need therapy. So I, I have a lot of respect for what the utility does. Yeah. And, and so my, my approach is be as much as a team player as possible, helping this individual out so they can help us, not necessarily me, help us as a sound department. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Because like I said, we're a team. We're a three-man team, and it's it's us against the rest of the department. Right, for <laughs> sure. Us against the rest of the production. Us the against the world, man. Yes. It doesn't yeah. it feel like it that way sometimes. And yeah. so, you know, we've, we've got to make we've got to make everything happen. Mm -hmm. You know, so the utilities also got a lot of job, a lot of stuff to do other than the stuff that I laid about jamming slates, comtex, and everything. And then when we're on location, you got to sort out noises. If we're in a restaurant, you know, getting in touch with yep. locations and, and sound and deviation, you got to get everything turned off that you can, that you're allowed to. And and then after you get all that done, you got to come in and boom your boom your guys. Mm -hmm. You're sweating <laughs> because it's a hundred degrees, and you've been on top of a roof of a famous restaurant 
pulling out fuse boxes so you can turn off the air. Well, just I, so you can I, I never down. touched anything like that <laughs> un, un, unless a, there's a locations or a site rep right there and saying, hey, I'm doing this. Yeah, no, they're like, <laughs> yeah, follow me, Tom, as we do this every show. The, okay. the, 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 that's, that's one thing a utility should do is never turn anything off unless – they notify the site rep or the locations <laughs> department that I'm. I want to do this. Or I'm, I'm turning doing, this off. <laughs> can can't or, or can I? <laughs> can I do this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> can I do this? Will it turn back on? <laughs> <laughs> so that's Man. that's that's what I'm saying. Is just they've got a lot of things, and plus and then they have to negotiate everything while wiring everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, get you know dealing with the wires on the wardrobe. Yep. and dealing with uh, personalities with wardrobe and stuff yep. like that. There's all sorts of stuff that they have to do. You know, I have a really funny story um, from a show. I was utility on a show. It was like a horror film. I think it was called Hysteria. If anybody wants to look it up, um, twelve years ago, and. We were filming in this really beautiful Venice home. It was right next to the water. Like, you know, they could have a boat right by their house type of deal. And this guy, I guess he was, uh, he was, um, he liked to shoot game. So he had all of these rare exotic meats in his refrigerator. This was like a beautiful refrigerator in their kitchen, you know. And we're shooting a scene where this guy's getting his stomach ripped open and people are like eating his intestines or whatever. Um, but it was really, really late. And, you know, I said, hey, we got to turn off the fridge. So we get them to turn off the fridge. But I didn't know about the put your keys in the fridge trick yet. Well, another thing that a friend of mine taught me is that um, put a piece of tape, like a piece of ga- white gaffer tape or something, yeah. on, on the fridge. Yeah. Or, or on all the things that you went and turned off. Interesting. And so then when you go to turn everything back on, you're looking for all the pieces of white gaffer tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just like, oh, put a little piece on, on, on the fridge. You know, boom, fridge. Oh, got to turn on the fridge. Yeah. Oh, it's this item. It's this item. It's this item. It's this cooler. It's this, this. And it's just, I got I to gotta plug this in. <laughs> that would have helped you know? me. And and so if, you, so if you're looking for, you know, okay, I've got like a bunch of white pieces of tape that, that are like if you're in a restaurant. Yeah, exactly. Unplugging things. You know, yep. that's that's like a thing, you know. So you got, you know, coolers and 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 stuff like that. So put little of course you got to do it that's out of the shot. Exactly. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> totally get it. Yeah, exactly. Well, that would have helped me because basically you know where the story's going. Long story short, we said got to turn off that fridge and it was a Friday night going into a Friday, so we're going home at three o'clock, and we didn't work until Monday and nobody turned the fridge back on and there was like Fifty thousand dollars worth of these rare exotic meats, and they all went bad. So when we went into the house on Monday morning, we're like, "What died in this house?" No, and it was like a lot of animals, literally, you know. So yeah, that that's the God. Make sure you check the fridges, utilities. Oh my goodness, that was so embarrassing. It was the worst day of my life. <laughs> I mean, because so so me as a boom operator, I'll, I'll work and I'll 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 help out the utility, especially if I know they're booming. Okay. And then I'll find places for them to be. Yeah. See, I'll, that's what I'm talking about. I'll I'll, I'll check the shadows for them. Mm-hmm. You know, and if if they need ciders or cutters or anything like that, then I'm talking with I'm I'm talking with the key grip. I'm talking with the gaffer. I'm talking with the camera. You, you know, the DP. Hey, can I adjust this light? You know, or mm-hmm, or, or mm-hmm, can mm-hmm. I cut this light? Right. Or can I do this? I I got a shadow over here. I got a, you know because I've got the boom the going over here. I got the second boom coming over here like this, and I've got a shadow. Can can right. I can I get some help over here? Can mm-hmm. I do that? So I'm in finding my spot and dealing with everything that I've got going on. I, um, I'm also finding, because I know the utility has got lots of stuff to do and I know they're coming in blind. So if I can help them, it's just like find their spots and everything like that. Exactly. While, you know, this is like knowing what's, what's going on. It's just like, so when they come in, it's just like, so if you were my utility, be like, after you're done, you're like, okay, where am I? You're like, Thomas, you're over there. Stand over there. Get these guys. You're cool. over here. And, and, and I, I even pull out my stick. Boom. I says, you're going to 
do this. This is your move, like like this. And here's your shadows over here. You, I've got a cut over here. If you do this, you do this. You know, you're out of the shot. Exactly. Yeah. I, and see, I love that because you know, it's unless if it's blatantly easy, like if it's a little bit of a complex shot. Tell me what to do. You've been doing the rehearsals and seeing exactly what needs to happen while I've been waiting to wire people or going to trailers or whatever we're doing. So that, I mean, that definitely helps. I wanted to ask you a question though. Um, what do you do when you have, uh, you know, when the utility has to boom or maybe even when you have an additional boom operator? I've worked on shows where they hire additional boom operators to come where they'll have two or oh, three yeah. people. Um, if you are the primary boom operator, do you take the most difficult booming position of the scene and then give the second and third boom operators yes. easier things, yes. or do you throw them to the wolves? No, no. I, I, I take the primary work. You take the primary work. If I'm, if, if I'm the lead guy... I take the primary work. How do you and find out what well, that is? Like, how do you figure that out? Well, I mean, a lot of that has to do with, you know, everybody being on set for the rehearsal. Uh huh. And and it's just like seeing how see, seeing the blocking rehearsal for the actors. Sure. And, and knowing it, and and so then you got your sides, and then it's just like, okay, so if it's just you and the utility, it's just like, okay, so it's just like you go through, boom one gets this line, 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 boom two gets this line, boom. You know, you can you can already see yeah. how, how it all plays out. Yeah. You know. You know can already see you know because if you watch where usually where the camera operators the camera operators in the dp stand at the angles where they want the cameras yeah so if you watch where they're working from and then where they're observing from it's just like okay so i know where they're going to be and Absolutely. so if i'm gonna so, so if i'm gonna get the scene i've got to be somewhere where they're not and and then you know, you're looking, you're thinking in the back of your head that, okay, I'm over here. I've got to get the scene. I've got to be here on X. Yeah. And on the set. Yeah. 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 Totally get it. And, and, and so, so I look at it, it's just like, okay. And if they're in a group and then if there's somebody's kind of like on, on, on the outer part of the group, if they're close together, then yeah, the boom operator, the main boom operator can get it. But if you've got one over here, one over here, or you got somebody in another room, then that those are obvious choices. Yeah, exactly. Or, you know, they pop their head through the door or from the hallways. It's like, hey, blah, 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 blah. You, you know, it's just like, oh, okay, that's an additional boom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because sometimes people think too, even like when they're popping their head through the door or whatever, they're wearing a lob, but they're popping their head through. That lob ain't going to sound very good. It's no. behind the door. Right, exactly. You know, you got to put a boom on it. You got to get it in front of the actor. Well, and then there's a lot of times where, you know, you, you got two people, you know, it's an office situation. You got the boss on one side of the desk and you got two people on the other side of the desk. So a lot of times, you know, a lot it's of times too that's much that, of a spread. That spreads like, like at least eight feet. Yep. And so it's just like, okay, so in situations like that, it's pretty simple. Put the, the second boom over there on the boss and, exactly. and, and the primary yeah. boom all you, over on the other two. You might not be the able to do guys. it because you see the shadows going across the table. So you got to have people just locked off. So you have one here, one there, one there, or one fish in the two, right? Mm -hmm. If he can, if he can, uh, if he or she can, and then one on the boss. Exactly. And, and that just solves all of the problems and it gets us away from these starchy shirts weird neckties where everything sounds throated, mm -hmm. right? It, it starts to make it sound like a real movie. I mean, one thing that I do to help me with my cues and stuff like that is I'll take my sides and I'll take my um, uh, my colored highlighters. Mm, nice. So so I'll, I'll get a colored highlighter pack of like 12, 12 different colors. And so I'll go through and I'll, I'll rain, as, as I call it, rainbowizing my sides. And so I'll set character A as a certain color and character B as a certain color and, character and, and so on down the line. And so that way I can look at it as, I, as I'm looking at the sides. It helps me differentiate the, uh, um, the words from the page. Yeah. And so, because otherwise, if, if, if I don't yeah, it's just block too it out, much. it's just words. Yeah. And it's just blah, 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 blah. It just helps me with my cues. And then that way I, 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 I can remember, boom, 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 mm -hmm. you know, and then boom, 
then da, 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 you know, it helps me remember, you know, where I need to be in the space. Yeah, you're thinking colors. I'm, yeah, I'm thinking colors. So, so, so George is over here is, is yellow. Fred is over here is blue. And green, 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 and, green. And yellow, 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 yeah, yellow. Yeah. Orange, orange, orange. Exactly. And, yeah. and then there's, of course, you know, you got to know, you know, the words. Yeah. You know, so you, so you got to know exactly yeah, what and then is. you start playing off of people where you know that you're on this person, but you're watching the next person that's going to speak so you can go to him if he cuts a line, things like that. You know, when you start getting into the nuances. Well, yeah, exactly. So, so, so getting to the nuances, that's one thing. It's just like, you know, watching the actors. Right. The actors will always breathe. Or take, swallow. They take a breath and they'll, they'll make something so you know, so, so, so... If you can be booming somebody and have and, and 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 keep another eye on the other actor and when he goes to breathe and and especially if 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 it's one of those tight little situations where yeah. where where it's designed to be a really tight cue you can kind of like loot you're already knowing and so it's just like and, and you can hedge the mic not leaving them, but bringing yeah. them over o over to the other guy. Yeah, doing like a late scoop type of a deal. But but right. keeping them both in the pattern. Exactly, exactly. And right. seeing that's the other thing is this is like being as a boom operator, you know, understanding the pattern of the mics. And yeah. Same with the utility and being a you know understanding you know, utility needs to understand the pattern of the mics and what exactly. mics you're using. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of funny that some people will put a microphone down. Uh, you know, like beginner boom ops, and you're just like, whoa, you don't realize you're like four feet from the pattern of this microphone. You need to come down, you need to move this way. And then when they get in, they're like, oh my gosh. It's like, well, I thought I could hear it, so it was okay. It's like, no, no, no. These microphones, they have sweet spots. You've got to get it into the source. You've got to attack that dialogue where it's coming out. Right. You know, our body, like, you know, I always tell people, um, if you put your hands on your chest, you can feel your chest vibrating. That's because sound doesn't just come out of our mouth. It basically comes out of all of this. So well, it's just like one sound mixer told me. It's just like when you hit that sweet spot, calls it full sound. Full sound. And, and so it sounds really nice, full and rich like and everything. Butter. And, and so you get that full sound. Exactly. Is, is once in, and so, and, and, and if it's slightly off, it's not that quite full sound. Mm -hmm. But if you if you have an understanding of how the microphone works, you can always keep the microphone and the actors within within the group. Keep it right in that axis point. Make sure it's good and hot and good and full sound. I like that. I never heard that before. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> So what else? So what do you think? Okay, so th I did like the perspective of the fact that since you are a boom operator and then you work as a utility as well, you get to see like, man, I wish that he would do this because that's what I do for my utilities. That's a good perspective. What about the relationship of the boom operator and the sound utility and the sound mixer? Like them two and this guy or this, this uh, person? Do you know mm, what I mean? Uh, I'm not quite under, understand what, what what your question is. Well, like how can okay, let's say for example, a lot of times sound mixers they don't necessarily get a third, maybe unless if you're on like a big union shoot. So let's so let's forget about that for a second. Let's say that you're working as a sound mixer and a boom operator for years, you know, maybe 10 or 15 years, and then you finally get a shoot where it's like you're going to be able to get a third, and so now you have this new guy that's never been in your department before. How do you start breaking them in? How do you start working them in so they understand how you guys work? Well, the one thing is is assess the indiv in, uh, the individual's abilities. Have an understanding. Oh, okay, is this guy? You know, how new is this guy? Is is he is he a, a seasoned veteran? Mm -hmm. uh, or if he's pretty green and 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 new and and we're we're bringing him in and we're kind of Grooming him, grooming he, he or she. Yeah, he, he, you know what I'm saying. Exactly. So, so if it's somebody of the season that that, that that's been a um, a uh, that knows that been around the block a lot of times, it's this is like you know, I know, I know that I'm not gonna have to worry about this guy, okay? Because he he or she is gonna be like on top of things. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to give them all, all the benefit of the doubt. It's just like, you know, I'm not going to micromanage anybody, especially if I know that somebody's been, you know, somebody's been doing this for a long time. Right, exactly. So, so that's that's the guy I don't want to be. I don't want to be the micromanager. I want to be able to, like, 
you know, especially with the utility. You do your job, you know, I do my job, and then whenever I have time, I'll help you do your job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly. Because I'm all about being, because like I said earlier, it's just like, you know, I'm about, because we're a team. Right. And and so it's it's not like the boom operator has X job, X, X, uh, X um, duties, utility has these duties, and the mixer does this, you know. You know, when, when you're done with this, you know, you're done. At the end of the day, you go home. Utility's done. You know, he's usually the last guy out. And the mixer, you know, is usually, and then he's the first guy out. Yeah. You know, whatever. Most of the time, it's just like, get the mixer out of here. Yeah. Me and the utility. Go home. <laughs> get out of here. Me and the utility will we'll pack up the rest yeah. of the gear, load the, load the truck, and <laughs> go Are you home. guys sure you want me to stay? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's okay. Just get, just, just enjoy your weekend. We'll enjoy ours. Thank you. We'll get it done. Yep, we'll get it done. <laughs> Thank you. Less to less to hear. Less to hear. <laughs> so, so first off is get the mixer out of here. Yep. You know, it's just like it's hilarious. Let let them know that we've got it all under I control. I thought I was the only one. <laughs> we've got it all under control. It, it, like I say, we've got it all in control because I mean, I've had utilities that I've worked with them, and this is like you go home. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll pack everything up. I'll, I'll load it. I'm like, no, dude, I'll help you. You know, yeah. I'm, I, 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 I'm going to help you. And, you know, we're going out of here together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. You know, that's that's the way I work. Yeah. You know, I kind of like it that way as well. I do like it when it's a team effort, you know, like I don't necessarily expect it anymore. But because I've had people where it's like, okay, wrap the the recorder's still rolling where I have to cut and finish it, and the boom operator just hands the stick and just walks away, doesn't even say good night. I've had those types of crews, um, but then I've had, like you said, the other people that are just like helping to count contacts because it is a nightmare. And then they turn off the lights and you're trying to find everything, and then they wonder why you're padding your your out times on your call sheets, and it's like because it took that long to find everything, <laughs> you know, like what do you want? Well, I know I, I've even had production come up to me. It's just like, why are you the last? Why are you still out? here? Why yeah. are you the last department out? Why yeah. are you the last department? Because we had we have three lobs missing still I, and I've, four I've, contacts. I've got, I've got a ton. I had a ton of lobs out. And I had a ton of contacts yep. out there. Yeah, and it's just like you know, putting all the way. You know, all of our gear is little gear, mm -hmm. and it's got all. You put yeah, away. It's not like losing a dolly. You know, <laughs> you know and, and so in this part of being organized is to right. put everything away in the place that it belongs. So that way in the morning you it, it's it's you get, there. It's there, it's ready to go and and, and you know that's you get how going shit fast. doesn't get broke. I don't know what that was. Good golly. Oh, Glendale yeah. Pasadena could be the parrots. I guess so, yeah. I guess we got <laughs> parrots in the house, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, well, very good. Well, no, on that note, I want to say thank you for joining me for this Mantis discussion. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Guys, thank you so much for joining us as well. Don't forget these air Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Pacific time, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Take care. Thank you.